Today, emergency response, Liberty County, as we know it, averages about 14,000 concurrent players every single day. But how did this all start? Let's take a trip down memory lane and see how far we have come. Imagine a place where everyone has to follow a similar set of rules. Everything's as fair as possible. Our vision was to make something that really wasn't on Roblox just yet. Emergency response is an authentic police role play game. You wanted players to choose to how realistic they would like to play. On October 13, 2018, for the very first time that we know of, Police Roleplay Community got exposed to the Roblox community with a game called North Point Roleplay. Now I couldn't really get much information on this game in particular, but we do have some gameplay videos that do show what the game looked like back then, and I think we can all see that we have come a really really long way from those. Now on November 3rd, 2018, Emergency Response Liberty County gets released to the Roblox community and it was an instant success. Within less than a month, the game becomes one of the most top rated games on Roblox, surpassing 1000 total game sales within one month of the game's release. This was likely because there wasn't many games like this at the time, which made ERLC quite unique and um, yeah, leading to its success. Within the next few months, ERLC releases countless of updates, which include new lighting and more cars for all departments. And then on December 10, 2018, ERLC gets the first massive update with a new combat system, fixed jail, fixed MDT bugs, and more. Only a couple days later, on the 12th, ERLC owner Mr. Fergie messages everyone that ERLC would release daily updates until the completion of the alpha phase. And on day one, ERLC adds the beloved ATM robberies we still have today. Then as promised, ERLC starts to update every single day, hitting new milestones every time they release an update. On the 15th, only a little after one month of release, ERLC surpasses 10,000 game sales, 15,000 favorites, and 100,000 game visits, which for one month is actually really impressive. Over the next few days, ERLC pushes out some minor bug fixes until the 29th of December 2018, in which they add a new fire department and a new UI system. They then continue to release countless of updates, adding things like cars, small UI changes, and more. Then in the first week of January, ERLC had a huge ban wave, but it was quickly resolved by the developers claiming it was a bug by their anti-cheat system. Another update drops on the 14th of January, introducing the XP system for all teams and a redesigned paycheck. Following this update came many more and ERLC started to go rapidly, reaching many, many more milestones. January 27th, 1 million game visits, February 2nd, 50,000 favorites, and so on. Then ERLC pushes out some smaller updates, which most are really like bug fixes. They also add a hospital and many new vehicles around this time as well. On February 9th, 2019, about a month after the XP system was released, they finally decide to add XP rewards, allowing you to unlock new vehicles, gear, or things like that, depending on your XP and rank. Over the coming week, ERLC adds major updates like new classic cars, slick top customization for police along with a game pass for that, and the ghost and detective liveries for the law enforcement teams. ERLC then releases their first April Fools update, which consisted of a color changing river, flipped stop signs, night parties at houses, the name of the game being changed to Police Simulator, and the power plant producing rainbows. Interesting take in my opinion. On the 15th of April, ERLC surpasses 100,000 game sales and 3 million game visits. That is actually insane to think about. They then add a detaining system, new combat system, and new police vehicles over the next few weeks. And then on May 12th, 2019, ERLC releases its first police week. 
This included four packages on the police vehicles and a badge hunt. On June 5th, 2019, ERLC hits 5 million game visits and continues to release update after update consisting of houses, paying off bounties, spot update, private servers, and more. And due to all of the milestones ERLC has been hitting recently, they decide to release their first XP boost, allowing you to get an XP boost whenever you arrest a criminal, and so on. And then on September 7th, 2019, just under one year of release, ERLC reaches 10 million game visits. And as a result from this, the price of ERLC gets lowered from 195 Robux to only 125. Then they released their first Halloween update, which brought a limited time police and civilian quests, trick or treat, and a fall map. Then ERLC turns one year old, massing over 13 million game visits and 270,000 game sales. And then they release the DOT update about a month after. They then start to push out mega updates featuring an all new house robbery grass changes and a new Ford Explorer interceptor for the police and sheriff team. As well as another update soon after, including pit and maneuvers and house fires. And after that, more updates as well as new milestones are released and achieved. Nothing really happened in between this, but Police Week rolls by again in 2020, in which the devs donated $2,400 to charity. And then they added the tool store and the gun store, so now you actually have to go to physical stores to purchase tools and weapons, as opposed to buying it straight from the player menu. They also added a jewelry store robbery and weapon damage. Along with even more updates, such as the law enforcement update and new milestones. A couple months later, on September 4th, 2020, ERLC released their tablet update along with an iPad giveaway. This brought a whole new player base to the game since the game was only playable on PC up till then. Then ERLC released a major map expansion update which introduced a new and improved map and a new Dodge Charger widebody. Then their annual Halloween update rolled around which brought the Ectomobile and later got replaced with a Ford Bronco. And a DOT update released including a Street Sweeper and the Bronco mentioned earlier. And then they decided to release a fire update, minimap and GUI update, and added free camp to private servers. And then on the 17th of December 2020, ERLC dropped its first ever winter update. This included many things such as the F250 for DOT with the snowplow attachment, ELS update, civilian flashlight, and improved weapons. As a result of the winter update, ERLC released a lot of major milestones. They had their first live event, which happened to be the Christmas live event. This live event brought a lot of players in so that they could see it. They then dropped the announcement that a New Year's live event was going to take place as well. The first update of 2021 came out, which included the beloved Frozen River and some new vehicles. Updates on updates came out including another combat update and a redesigned Lamborghini, what a car it was. Over the next few updates, ERLC got new cars and bug improvements. Nothing much to really add on to that there. April Fools 2021 came out adding pets, which was an interesting take. Took everyone by surprise and I don't think a lot anyone was expecting it. And ERLC's most unexpected and arguably biggest update yet, the air support update. Up till this time, the devs said that helicopters were not going to be coming to ERLC, but I guess they were wrong. Then Roblox hosted the Metaverse Champions event, in which ERLC was taking a part in. This event brought a lot of hate to the game because the game was still paid access at the time, which meant that a lot of people could not join or participate in some of the challenges that would make their team win. Firefighter Appreciation Day came out sometime later, including a new Dodge Charger slick top and a new top rank, the Chief whatever it's called. A couple days later, ERLC announced Police Week 2021, in which they were adding one new thing for the police team every single day, and then an EMS update just one week after that with a stretcher and a backboard tool. Even more updates get released including the scanner tool, lower game price, 
new vehicles, air support cameras, fire extinguisher tool, and more. A lot to talk about, really. And then on the 16th of June, 2021, we get leaks of something huge. And then on the 25th of June, 2021, ERLC released their first ever summer update. This was a huge update which brought things such as civilian jobs, made the game free to play, giving the paid access players an exclusive car and an exclusive weapon, and much more. More updates include cones, DOT road signs, pepper spray and taser model, cars for police, and all of that. Then they released private server packs and custom liveries which everybody was hyped about. ERLC released a civilian job update called the news job. And then they released a mega update for all teams. More updates released and they included taxi job, limo job, wraparound rambar and all of that. And then the Halloween update rolls around but this time in parts. Not really much to know about this update because it was mostly the same as the other ones though. They then start to release some minor updates until a massive update known as the Bank Heist update came out, which brought the Bank Heist, Mafias, a new bank, a new civilian job, and a lot more. ERLC then starts to many updates, most notable being the Winner update, which brought the new mod shop, quests, and new vehicles. The New Year's live event also happens a few days later, and more updates come out, which include melee weapons, vehicles, makes three guys interactive job, and more. Then a huge update known as the police customization update came out, which converted the slick top game pass into a police customization game pass, and it added a lot of features to the police team because it added a new garage and a lot of customizability to police cars. Also the bank truck got added around this time too, but nobody really uses them, you know? AI EMS calls have come out, which is a great feature that they added to the game, even though they might have taken some inspiration from a certain game. A new housing update then comes out, which makes the interiors of the house actually on the ground inside of the house, instead of teleporting you to a random block in the sky. Police Week 2022 came out, which was yet another instant hit. This update included a new police car badge hunt and new light bar options for the police customization game pass. And then summer update 2022. This update included an entire new town called Springfield, vehicles, jobs, major server calls which are quite game changing and a lot lot more. They also released their first ever promo code for 1 million Roblox group members. A special operations update shortly after that which was basically a hazmat update with a new truck and suits. Another update comes out after RDC 2022 which included a new shopping outlet and some new DOT road barriers. ERLC then releases their fall update which consisted of a pumpkin patch and a sponsored event by Philips the razor company along with the barber shop for the quest and a haunted house and trick or treating. About a month or two later ERLC releases its Christmas update which consisted of decorations at the downtown park and a Santa's workshop. More updates released including robberies, highway signs, ice skating rink, and more. And they go on to hit more milestones like 500 million visits. ERLC then releases a Lunar New Year update for all of the people who believe in it. 5 Days of Vehicles releases shortly after that and adds quite a lot of cars to the game. They also release a Spring and Mobile update along with giving away a free iPhone 13 mini. And then ERLC releases another major update which was also heavily inspired by another game, the weather update. This gave us new commands and actual rain which was very annoying looking at it now. After this ERLC collabs with YouTuber McSlot to host a license plate challenge which was won by user 12 or less. In between this ERLC adds the Easter update which brought two egg hunts, one for Roblox and one for ERLC and as a reward you would earn 12 or less's license plate. ERLC updates slow down for about a month after this until they release the construction update which brought construction vehicles and a building that players could actually build. It also gave a use for the construction site that we thought was going to be a huge building during the summer update. About two weeks after this update, ERLC sets a like goal for their game, saying that if they hit 777,000 likes, 
they would release two new vehicles, which happened to be the G-Wagon and the lawnmower. After this police week starts, and like the new norm, they introduce it in parts. Overall, the update consisted of a new code, XP boost, and two new police vehicles, new sheriff's office, and a new uniform license plate and realistic vehicle tuning. Now, the realistic vehicle tuning got some mixed opinions. <laughs> Yeah, I think you can see why. This was quickly removed by the PRC devs, saying that they will work on it before it is reintroduced, if ever. During this time, a leaker that I cannot name leaked a bunch of assets that were not yet released by PRC. I made videos on some of the leaks and they got some great views I must say. Even ERLC's biggest YouTubers such as Amaze and OMB made videos on these leaks, until it was deemed prohibited by the PRC devs. But clearly, some did not get the idea. Hopping into the game and probably wondering why I'm a noob. It's get actually because my main account got banned. So, yeah. A YouTuber by the name of Cyrix decided to release a leak video the day after Mr. Fergie announced it. Yeah, I, d I don't know either. As a result, he was banned from the game, only temporarily, however. After this, nobody dared to make a video about the leaks, even though the leaker was still putting out leaks. And then, finally, after about one month later, we got news of the summer update. Part 1 This brought a custom lighting pack, new vehicles, new fire department in Springfield, and overall was pretty great, even though people saying that it was underwhelming. Now obviously I wasn't one of those people, I would never talk bad about it in ERLC, right, 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 right. They also hit 100,000 TikTok followers around this time too, and also doing their first ever developer spotlight with John Huntsman in which they basically talk about the things that go on behind the scenes of making an ERLC update. Summer Update Part 2 dropped shortly after which brought mine caves, safe robberies, drones, a car locking and unlocking system, and a DMV update. ERLC then gets many more updates, the Labor Day update which brought DOT custom liveries and a new restaurant. Then a month later they get a pretty useless update which brought a new boombox UGC, fire updates and a lot of bug fixes. Not too sure why they added this but still cool nonetheless. On Friday the 13th they added a fall map but this time it looked a bit different, I'm not too sure as to why. And then a new Halloween update drops with the murder mystery quest and a new pumpkin patch at the farms area. The next day ERLC releases their first UGC item, the body cam. This will not give any bonuses in the game, it will just for show. Thanksgiving rolls around in which the devs added a play to heal event, which they added 4 UGCs, a food drive minigame, resulted in them donating money to a charity, and a new jewelry store robbery system. On December 7, 2023, Mr. Fergie announced that custom vehicle designs would be introduced in the near future. This was likely done due to the major copyright issue that is still going on in Roblox. But in the message, he attached two photos of vehicles, both of which being electric vehicles. This was taken as the PRC devs would add electric vehicles in the winter update, but it turns out otherwise. Instead of the winter update, they decide to add some new vehicles, none of which were electric, a winter map, and that's basically it. Just after New Year, the devs hosted their first in-game competition, which was an arrest challenge, with prizes ranging up to $1 million in-game cash. That is quite a lot. Ultimately, the competition was won by user the Real Noob 09 with 1,310 arrests in under three days. I have no idea how that's possible. Now, finally, on the 28th of January, Mr. Fergie posts an unexpected message with a photo that reads "The future is coming," along with a car with lightning bolts around it. We then get leaks over the next few days, and five to six days later, we got electric vehicles in the game. A couple days later, on the 9th of February. The devs, along with a bunch of other popular YouTubers, take part in a Q&A talking about the future of ERLC and their channels. Yeah, no, I'm not popular enough to take part in that, but hey, they got asked a lot of questions, and some of which were pretty, pretty interesting. What, somebody said, uh, what rank are you guys in Fortnite? First of all, Fortnite is trash because you shoot someone <laughs> once, they build a, a five-star hotel within five seconds. I don't understand. 
After this, there wasn't really much until a little over a month later. March 12th, 2024, ERLC takes part in another Roblox event known as The Hunt. This came with a giant golden bunny in the middle of the lake and an egg hunt, but nothing much really. Not really much happened after this either, but they did release a St. Patrick's Day update which gave us a green river for some time. That's cool, I guess. After this, the devs hosted another competition, but this time for most jewelry store robberies with $1 million as the prize again. A couple days later, Roblox had yet another issue disconnecting players from the game, known as Error 277. This bugged the devs quite a bit, even reaching out to the community for help. After Error 277 was resolved, yet another update drops, consisting of some redesigned vehicles, a cyber truck, disabled vehicles called for DOT, and a new police taser. This is where they also added drowning and fall damage. On May 13th, 2024, Crywink replaces Shawnee G as the lead developer because Shawnee G had decided to step down. We speculate the reason to be to focus on his career as a police officer, as mentioned in a Roblox developer interview. Roughly a year and a half ago, I made the decision, yeah. I want to be a cop. Currently, I'm in a police academy in New York. The overwhelming reaction was, wow, you left from a nice, comfy chair to potentially, you know, risking your life. I always look to challenge myself more and more every day. How can we do better than the day before? Police week rolls by again with the new vehicle attachments, XP boosts, a badge hunt, and trailers. And finally, the last update to date, we have got the DOT trailers, a daily login bonus, custom liveries for trailers, and a refreshed Ford Explorer, which looks absolutely horrible. It looks so horrible, PRC are working on remodeling it. Now, as of recording, the summer update 2024 has just been released, so let me know what you think is coming if it's not already out. If it is already out, let me know what you think of it. Anyway, it's crazy to see how far we have come as a game, as a community, and as a team in general. It is also great to see the hard work that PRC has put in for six whole years in this game. It's absolutely insane to me that you can be focused on something for so long. Anyway, I spent a lot of time making this video, so I would appreciate if you could do me a favor, like the video so that it reaches more people, and while you're down there, you might as well subscribe. But that's it for now, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.